Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, then remember that the best is yet to come. I've held back the best stories until later on in the month. I want to make a deal with you. There is one story which perhaps is the most incredible story that I was thinking of sharing this month. And I was thinking of sharing it on the 27th night of Ramadan if you can help me to get to 10,000 subscribers. So I'm doing this for free. I'm not charging money for this. But please help me to get to 10,000 subscribers. If you can do that by the 27th night, then I will, sh I will share this story. Um, today's story, it took place about seven weeks after the Srebrenica genocide in Bosnia. Bosnia is a small country in the center of Europe. And in 1992 to 1995, there was a genocide that took place there where the Orthodox Serb nationalists, they killed over 100,000 Muslims in some very uh, horrific uh, circumstances. Uh, Srebrenica is known as Europe's worst massacre since the Second World War, since the Holocaust. And about seven, six or seven weeks after the Srebrenica genocide, which took place in July 1995, there was a massive battle that the Bosnian army undertook a massive offensive in order to try and capture land back from the Serbs. In that battle, there were approximately 2,000 foreign Muslim fighters from all parts of the world, uh, South America, uh, Middle East, Africa, Far East even, uh, Europe. So I was there present while this um, incident happened. And when this battle took place, I was injured at the start of it and I was evacuated to the main city for a few days. I came back and I met my friends who had been there and some of them had also been injured but um, not as bad as I was and so we were just talking and they said oh Abu Mujahid isn't back yet and uh, everyone's come back so he's not back so we thought maybe he's just with one of the other groups and he'll come back in a day or two another day went by so day four after the battle day five day six and all the other groups had come back to the base camp but Abu Mujahid and he Abu Mujahid had not come back yet he was a British brother a British Muslim from uh, West London he was 21 years old and he was we all used there was only a small group of uh, brothers from Britain so we used to stay in the same tent and we used to laugh and, and joke together and he was my he was my roommate so everyone had come back but he hadn't come back so on the eighth day the commander he sent a search party to look for him because they thought maybe he's injured and he's unable to move he needs help uh, maybe he's been captured by the enemy they just wanted to go and 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 and, and look um uh, look for him so in the morning a search party various search parties went out onto the mountains where the battle took place in order to see if they could find any trace of him i think it was uh, asr time and I had, I was in like the toilets at the base camp and I just finished making wudu. And I saw that there was a van that had entered the base camp and a group of about a hundred brothers were, had made like a circle around it. They were like all peering in the windows. They were trying to, to see it was like a sort of, some sort of commotion going on. As I walked up and I approached that crowd, then a waft of perfume came with the air it came into my nose and this was one of the most incredible scents that I've ever smelled in my life it was out of this world it was a heavenly divine scent a like a very special perfume and it came and then as I got closer a few others that were there several others that were there they were just looking at each other and they were like can you smell that can you smell that and obviously we didn't have perfume there. I mean, you're, you're, you're in, in, in a war zone. You don't have, have, have perfume and, and, and things like that. And, uh, and certainly not of that quality. So several of us said to each other that, can you smell that? Can you smell that? And as I got closer to that group, then one of my friends, he told me, he said, in that van is the body of Abu Mujahid. They found him on the mountain and he had been shaheed. He had been martyred. He'd been shot through the shot through the heart 
uh, the commander later he allowed I mean lots of people wanted to see his body but he only allowed the brothers from Britain to go in and um, to go into the van and to see his body so I remember I went into the van and I saw his body and um, it, it was definitely him I recognized him by his boots his uh, his watch um, and uh, he had this like like olive green um, uh, scarf that he was wearing um, and um, he was buried and and um, and that was that what was the smell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone is killed in Allah's path Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sends special angels special angels they descend and in order to take the soul of this person because it is a great ceremony and those angels when they descend then they bring with them the sense of the heavens so we obviously can't see this so it's most likely that there were many angels that were present there and they had brought their own scents and smells with them and that's what we were smelling but we we we, we couldn't see that Allah knows best these are signs and that was a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave to us his friends and to others that were there to reassure them and to reassure us and to inspire us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still with us and this person who has passed even though for us it's a cause of sadness but that person has gone to a better abode if like any one with an ounce of humanity in their hearts you are feeling sadness and pain at what is happening to the Muslims in Gaza to the children that have been killed the men the women the innocent people that have been killed then rest assured that what we are seeing is not the whole picture I mean I don't mean in terms of media but what we are seeing is not the whole picture Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a whole universe out there there's a whole world of the unseen the families that are killed so the pain is for us who are left behind the families that are killed the, the children that are killed they are okay now they are in Jannah with their, with their families and, and their entire generations they will be in paradise for eternity they are not in any pain they're not under siege they don't have restrictions on electricity or food they're happy if their children then we're there with the Prophet Ibrahim salam, they're being taken taken care of the sadness is for those people that like their families and their friends and others like us who have to watch these scenes and to feel sad at them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy those that have been killed they are in a better place and it's to give us comfort and stories like this are to give us comfort and to reassure us that they are okay don't worry about the one that's passed worry about yourself but the one that has passed he is he is okay what will be your state at the time of your death what will be your state what will you be doing where will you be what action will you be doing what will you be saying or speaking what will your day be like your the last day that you spend on the face of this earth we don't know none of us know what our state will be therefore one of the things that we should be making dua to Allah this Ramadan is to ask him for a good ending and that the best of our days is the day in which we meet you O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't know what is our state going to be but what we do know is that the whatever actions we do on a regular basis if we do lots of good deeds and lots of good actions we're doing charity we're helping people we're visiting the sick we're going to the masjid we're earning a halal income for our families if most of our time is spent doing these good deeds then it's quite likely that our ending will also come whilst we are doing one of these good deeds and in the same way if we are living a life of sin and we are far from Allah and we are not praying and we're partaking in sin it's quite likely that our end will come whilst we are doing one of these things 
so this was um this was today's uh, story if you enjoyed this story then it, and when i say story i should actually say witness account it's a witness account it's not a story it's not something that's made up it's something that i witnessed myself if you enjoyed this video please click the like button press subscribe turn on the bell share it and leave a comment even if it's just to say alhamdulillah because what happens is that the more engagement there is on these videos then youtube shows it to more people and help me get to those 10,000 subscribers uh, by the 27th night of Ramadan and if that happens then inshallah I will share an incredible story until the next one assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh